today we're going to derive a very classic geometry problem, and that's the area of a circle. And we're going to do that by pinning a circle between an inscribed n-gon, so that's a regular polygon with n sides, and a circumscribed n-gon. So I've drawn a picture of what's going on here with just a couple of the pieces of the n-gon. So let's see, these that have green wedges coming out and are either red or pink, that is our inscribed n-gon. So by inscribed, I mean that it is totally within our circle and the vertices are along the edge of the circle. So there's our inscribed n-gon. And then we have a circumscribed n-gon as well. And so that, for now, is in peach. And so that will be such that the edges are tangent to the circle, and so the circle is completely contained in this circumscribed n-gon. Okay, so the first thing that we'll do is calculate the area of the inscribed n-gon, and then we'll calculate the area of the circumscribed n-gon argue that the area of the circle is between those, and then take some sort of limit. Okay, so the inscribed n-gon is going to be n copies of this triangle right here. So we'll have n copies of triangle. Well, maybe we should give a name to this triangle. Maybe we'll give the name just one to this triangle. So triangle number one. Okay, so if we can calculate the area of this triangle one, then we can just multiply that by n and we'll have the area of the inscribed n gone. Okay, so we can calculate the area of a triangle just by using the one half base times height measurement, but we don't have the base or the height on here. So let's notice that if we drop a perpendicular to this edge right here, so let's do that. So that will give us our height. So there we've got a perpendicular. So like I said, that's a perpendicular. Then we probably wanna measure this angle. So how could we do that? So this is splitting the circle up into n pieces, and a circle has measurement two pi radians around the whole thing. So that means this whole thing before we bisected was two pi over n, which means this portion right here after we've bisected is pi over n radians. Okay, so that's actually good to know. And now let's maybe also notice that this distance from here, the center, to here, which is a vertex on the n-gon, is exactly the radius of the circle. And so obviously we're going for the standard formula for the area of a circle, which is pi times the radius squared. So we probably need a name for the radius. I'll call it r. Great. Then another thing that we need is the height of this triangle. So that'll be the length of that yellow line as well as the base of this triangle, which I'll call B, which is the length of this red line. Okay, so from here, we can calculate the height and the base in terms of the radius as well as this angle using trigonometry. So what we'll do is cut this base into two pieces. So this bit right here is the base over two because we're bisecting that um, line segment. Okay, so now let's take the sine of pi over n. So sine, if you recall, is opposite over hypotenuse. So that will be b over two over r. So we can write that as b over two times r. Okay, nice. But let's notice that that means that the base over two, maybe we'll write it like that, the base over two is equal to the radius times sine of pi over n. Now let's calculate the height here and we'll use the fact that the cosine of an angle is the length of the adjacent leg divided by the hypotenuse. So the side that is adjacent is this H, the hypotenuse is R, so this gives us H over R. So notice that tells us that the height is equal to the R times cosine pi over N. Okay, so that's good. 
but that means that we can easily calculate the area of triangle number one as one half base times height or base times height over two. And that's gonna be R squared sine pi over n times cosine of pi over n. So now we can multiply the area of this triangle by n to get the area of the inscribed n gone by our previous discussion. And we'll have a sub n minus, that'll be the notation that I use for the area of the inscribed n gone, is r squared times n times the sine of pi over n times the cosine of pi over n. Okay, great. So just to reiterate, that's the area of the inscribed n gone. Okay, so now let's maybe get rid of this little calculation right here and we'll calculate the area of the circumscribed n-gon. So we just finished finding the area of the inscribed n-gon and now we're gonna use a similar strategy to find the area of the circumscribed n-gon. So I've highlighted that down here in orange. So let's start by noticing that if we go from the center to the edge of the circle, that's a distance of the radius but that serves as the height for our circumscribed n gone. So that's pretty cool to know. And then all that's left is we need to calculate the base. So let's say maybe this entire thing right here is the base, but that means that this bit right here is the base over two. So I'll use a capital B for that. Okay, and again, we need to calculate the measurement of this angle, but luckily the measurement of this angle is exactly the same as we had before by exactly the same argument, and this guy right here is a right angle. So notice we have the height is R, the base of this like half of the triangle is B over two, but we'd like to write B over two in terms of R because we know our final area of our circle is allowed to depend on R, but it shouldn't depend on this like intermediate variable base. But how could we do that with a single trigonometric function? I think maybe the best way to do it is with the tangent function. So notice that tangent is opposite over adjacent. So we have the tangent of pi over n is equal to b over 2 over r. So we have b over 2r like that. But now we can solve that for b over 2 and we'll see that b over 2 is equal to r times the tangent of pi over n. But now we can use the formula for the area of a triangle. So let's maybe call this whole thing right here triangle two. And I mean this entire thing. So to find the area of triangle two, so let's write that down, area of triangle two, we need one half base times height again. But now the base is written in terms of the radius like that over there, and then the height is just r. So that means we need base times radius over two, but let's notice that that's exactly just gonna be r squared times tangent of pi over n. So it's got like a pretty similar feel to what we had before. But now if we like multiply that by n, we get the area of the circumscribed n gone because this is exactly one nth of the circumscribed n gone. So we have a n plus, is equal to r squared times n times the tangent of pi over n, which maybe we should write that out in terms of sine and cosine just looking forward. So that'll be r squared times n times the sine of pi over n over the cosine of pi over n. So let's maybe condense that up here and then we'll do our final calculation. So just to reiterate what we're doing, we've approximated the area of the circle between the area of an inscribed n-gon and the area of a circumscribed n-gon. We also calculated the area of that inscribed n-gon and circumscribed n-gon in terms of n, r, which was the radius of the circle, and some trig functions. And now we're gonna take the limit of the left-hand side and the right-hand side, show that they approach the same value, which means the area of the circle will be be equal to that value. So let's maybe start with this one right here, the area of the inscribed n-gon. So we'll take the limit 
as n goes to infinity of r squared times n times the sine of pi over n times the cosine of pi over n. Great. Now we're going to use the fact that as n goes to infinity, cosine of pi over n turns into cosine of zero, or approaches cosine of zero, I should say, and cosine of zero is one. So that means this whole thing just goes off to the number one, and so all we have to worry about is what's left over, which is this stuff right here. Okay. And in order to calculate that, I'm going to make a bit of a change of variables to put it into terms that are very similar to that you might see in a first semester calculus class. So let's set theta equal to pi over n. Notice that means that n is equal to pi over theta. And as n goes to infinity, theta approaches zero. Okay, good. So that takes care of all of our change of variables. So that means this thing looks like this. I'm going to maybe bring this r squared out. And now we have the limit as theta approaches zero. Instead of n, I will write pi over theta. So I have pi over theta, but I'll write that as sine theta over theta. So th sine theta over theta. And then it's a well-known limit value that the limit as theta goes to zero of sine theta over theta is one. So this turns into the number one, and we see that our limit here is just r squared times pi, or maybe that's more standardly written as pi r squared. So that's the limit of this purple side right here. Okay, so now let's do the same calculation, but maybe the limit for this brown side. So we're going to take the limit as n goes to infinity. Maybe I'll take that r squared out. And then I have n times sine of pi over n over cosine of pi over n. Now, using the same first trick that we did before, we know that this cosine bit approaches 1, and we're left with exactly the same limit that we had after that cosine approaches 1. We can use the same change of variables, and we'll see that this approaches pi r squared. Okay, so let's see what happened. We pinned the area of our circle between two objects that have the same limiting area, but that means that the area of our circle is in fact what we would expect, which is pi r squared. And that's a good place to stop.